Western politicians are turning a blind eye to Israel's war crimes, as are lots of Western journalists. But not all of them. Take a look at this from high-profile MSNBC host Joy Reid. Given these bombings are being done using our tax dollars, perhaps we should ask some questions. For example, how does bombing a densely populated land strip filled 50 percent with children constitute self-defense? How does bombing hospitals, churches, mosques, and UN schools constitute self-defense? Well, you say, if Hamas fighters are hiding in the hospital using the civilians as human shields, okay, let's say they are. Are you arguing that flattening the hospital and killing newborns in their incubators and their moms in the NICU, cancer patients, someone with a broken leg, the doctors, nurses, and just the women and kids hiding in the hospital, that that's not a war crime? Because you would be wrong, according to international law. But why don't the people in Gaza just turn over Hamas militants to the Israelis? Okay, how do you propose they do that? Hamas is the de facto government in Gaza, and they're the ones with the guns. The leaders of Hamas aren't even in Gaza. And if they were, if you were a teenager living in an open-air prison, getting bombed day and night by, let's say, Mexico, and Mexican police kicked in the door and raided your house anytime they wanted and turned off the water and cut off your food, what are you going to do? Side with them? Help them while you're dying? That's like asking why black folks don't help or trust the police. Okay, but after 9-11, we bombed Afghanistan in self-defense. Yeah, we did. And did that put an end to Al-Qaeda or get bin Laden? No, it did not. Because like Hamas, bin Laden wasn't in the country we were bombing. President Obama got him 10 years later in Pakistan using special forces and without bombing scores of kids to death. Bombing Afghanistan did buy us a 20-year occupation that got us more enemies in the Muslim world when we scooped people up on the battlefield and dragged them off to Gitmo. And when we threw in a gratuitous war against Iraq based on lies by a Bush administration that traded on our anger and our fear, the world rose up against us as we committed torture and tossed former Iraqi police and soldiers into makeshift gulags, and those prisoners later turned into ISIS. Oh, and the Taliban are back in control of Afghanistan. So again, what is the goal of mass bombing Gaza? Is it to find the people Hamas militants abducted on October 7? Okay, how? By flattening whatever shelter they're taking from the bombs? The bit where I was watching that, because as I say, she's not, you know, she's not a radical leftist, right? She's sort of associated with the moderate wing of the Democratic Party. But the bit I saw it where I was like, oh, wow, she went there was, you know, I, I, I thought maybe she was going to make the argument, you know, they're all kids when Hamas got elected. They're also living under um, the tyranny of Hamas, which is sort of like a line which some sort of liberals use. She's like, no, if, if, if you were being bombed by an occupying power, are you going to side with the people that's bombing you or are you going to side with the people resisting them, right? Which I thought was a, a radical a, a argument, which lots of people, you know, are, are reluctant to make in the press. So I thought it was really cool to see sort of like a, a liberal mainstream host making that argument. It's presumably not a coincidence that Joy Reid is black. We showed Tana Hesse Coates sort of yesterday making similar arguments to her. And it it does seem like there is a bit of movement in America here. And I suppose especially maybe because you've got, you know, certain black people who are part of the Democratic establishment who who might in many ways be a bit centrist with their politics, but they can see racism and racial injustice when it's staring them in the face. I think also, Michael, there's the Tucker Carlson factor which is that you have now Republicans you know, massively disagreeing with establishment consensus on foreign policy. doesn't mean you agree with everything Tucker Carlson says, but I think if you're a smart Democrat operative or somebody in the media, you go, oh, he's got a point. I mean, if he can dissent, why can't I? And a lot of what she was saying there, Michael, the exact words could have been said by Tucker Carlson. You don't have to like the guy to acknowledge that which I find really, really intriguing. And the point you're saying about um, people who are radicalized by what's going on is entirely true. If you say this in British media, you will get slammed. But nevertheless, it's, it's the case. You know, you might be a, a, a Palestinian man in Gaza, a 40-year-old man, two children. You might hate Hamas. You might have hated them in 2006 when they last won an election. But then you lose your two children because of a, a bomb. What do you think that person will do? Seriously. What do you think that person's going to do? How do you think they're going to feel? Who do you think they're going to hold responsible? Realistically. And if that was you, if those were your children, what would you do? It's, it's not a stupid question. Uh, now, it's not to legitimize what Hamas are doing. But as I said a while back, right at the start of this thing, every single bomb that falls on Gaza and kills innocent civilians 
is a recruiting sergeant for Hamas. Now, you can dismiss that. You can say it's untrue. I think it's patently obvious. Uh, and so the question of what's the right strategy here is the correct one. And I think there is a very real possibility of Israel doing the exact same thing the US does after 9-11, which is massive overreaction, which, you know, arguably was the intention of Hamas. These kinds of um, actions, part of the motive there is to get the uh, adversary to overreact in their response and to create points of vulnerability. And I think there's a very real possibility of, of Israel doing that. As we said earlier on, 200 hostages right now in uh, in, in, in Gaza, 1,400 people died, but 9,000 Gazan civilians have died. What's it got to take for it to be proportional? 90,000, 190,000, 290,000? And these are the questions which aren't being asked by apparently liberal democratic societies in the West. So it is very good to see, Michael. I think we're also at a tipping point with regards to foreign policy. You know, the fact that Biden thinks that they can just give 14 billion to Israel, no questions asked. That moment has gone. The public, whether it's in the US or in this country, cares about foreign policy in a way it did not 25 years ago, for better or worse, right? You cannot put that genie back in the bottle. Uh, and the idea that you're just spending taxpayer money willy-nilly, that already is upsetting people in the US with regards to Ukraine quite deeply. It's a major issue, actually, for Tea Party Republicans. I think it'll be a major issue if, if Trump gets back into the White House. Um, so watch this space, because the uni party in both uh, the United States and here, the party establishments of, the, of these two parties in our first-past-the-post systems, that fake consensus they have on foreign policy is really at odds with how much the public thinks.